How many games are left of the season? Well, only 72 games left. Okay, can I go? I don't really want to watch all of this. Oh, no, you don't. We are staying together watching this season unfold. Oh, but that's so bad. I know, but we can make it together. What's up, guys? It is I, the Finnish magician. <laughs> <laughs> we have a slight rap in a hurricane. Metro Morello is a minute of a while. Woo! Well, that win streak was fun while it lasted. Two games, and I'm kind of scared to say this potentially is the longest we're gonna have, so... Mm. By the way, Nashville won 4 to nothing. Shut out, once again, we conceded in almost every situation we could have. Yeah, remember when I said that we could beat them in the special team? Only for Nashville to shut us out and even score in one of our power plays. I don't know how long I can make this video, because what is there to say outside just a performance where I think we played a strong 20 minutes of the first period. Clearly the better team. We had so many good chances. Suka had a breakaway. Koivu was right on the doorstep. Both missed on a good pick Irene, but also two bad shots, which it just needed to be capitalized on. I heard this a lot last season, and I think this is one of the games as well, where if we have Kirill Kaprizov in front of those chances, in our team, in our lineup, we are in this game, because he's gonna score at least one of those two, because he's a goal scorer. He is gonna score on those kind of chances. And that's what he's done in the KHL, he's gonna be able to do that in the NHL, I think. So having him on the team, we would be able to be 1 or 2 nil up before the second period starts. That changes the complexity of the game completely. That means we can play more Bruce Boudreau hockey, which we saw against a team like Edmonton. That is where we want to be. If we're in the lead in the, into the second period, multiple goal lead into the second, we can shut down. Unfortunately, it's 0-0, zero, zero, and within 30 seconds of the second period, Alex Daylox makes... The first of his mistakes. Mikko Salmelaki, I think that's how you pronounce it, a guy I had not heard of before this game, and I'm sorry Nashville fans, but I don't know your fourth liners. He takes a shot, and honestly, it's a shot from the point which is not even close to being dangerous. It's a wrist shot after a drop pass, but it's not dangerous at all, yet it just beat Alex Daylock. No screen, no anything, there's no way to defend it. Alex Daylock, I think, have had some really good games for Minnesota, but at the same time, he also have had games like this, where he allows one or two absolute muffins. You cannot allow the goal like this. It goes right through him. It's not a good shot. It's people in the commentator position try to say, oh, but it's a perfect shot. Yes, it's over the pad, but with that speed, you have to have that as a netminder in the NHL. After that goal, we had a few more chances. I think Nashville was a little bit more competitive in this period. I still think we were a better team in this period, but we didn't score. And if you don't score, eventually the other team will do it for you. With 30 seconds left of the second period, Nashville scores again. Can you see the correlation here? 30 seconds after the period start, 30 seconds before the period start. Alex Daylock focused all of the time. And it's a copy-paste! It's literally a copy-paste. This time it's just a different shooter. I think it's Jan Krok without me being 100% who has the shot this time. But again, it just beats Alex Daylock. This one is a bit better placed, but it still just beats him straight up. There's no screen, there's no... Mm. Somehow, despite Nashville have having maybe four good chances and us having like 10 quality chances that you would be able to argue that is a genuine goal scoring opportunity, we're down two to nothing. And it, in the third we collapse, third period, we, we've been broken, we've been battled, we had all the chances, yet we can't find the resistance to keep that going in the third. Nashville has the momentum. They capitalize fast on a play that I don't even know what we're doing at. This guy here has the puck. Who is dangerous in that situation? Guy right in front of the goal in this case, Greg Smith. Notice where all of what was this, leaving this complete here open. All it takes is one pass to go there, and he has a wide open net and a breakaway and ability to literally do a shootout shot at this point. Greg Smith could take a lunch break and still have time to make a move because we have Ryan Suter, we have Jared Spurgeon, we have Zach Parise and we have Miku Koivu over here all looking at stars and looking at Nick Benino just like Ooh, the club. I'm not gonna blame Staylock on this one, don't worry. But the fact that four of our major stars make that great an error is concerning. Those four stars should not leave that much of a room in front of the net and all be on the same guy. Someone talk, someone say something. Koivu, you're the captain. Yell at Jared Spurgeon, yell at someone just to say, cover guy in front. 
in front, something. You can't be four guys on the same person, especially when he's on the board and the guys in front of the net is completely wide open. It's not rocket science. It's not rocket science that if you cover a man with multiple guys, there's gonna be someone open. And if that guy's in front of the net, that's a great A scoring chance. Now do that with four guys and you're basically committing suicide, which is what happened in this play. Three to nothing, game over. We get a power play. Maybe we could like save some face, maybe get a, another late push like we did against Pittsburgh. Nope. Ryan Tudor, who I think had a really poor game today um he really did not perform in front of his old home crowd i don't know if that psyched him or what it is but he's been in minnesota for so long it shouldn't anymore massive mistake by ryan Sudo, who throws a almost suicide ish pass to jason Zucker. that gets the intercepted that goes into a breakaway because brian Sudo has caught flat footed offensively and then a lack of hustle afterwards in my opinion to come back into the play that leads to a breakaway that leads to four to nothing that's how we end it that's how we lose it. Could I talk about the next game? Yeah, we're playing LA. Another team that's not doing well. We have to win that game. We're at home in the XL Energy Center. That's a game we should be able to win. Again, I said it before. I don't like the idea of losing. And I don't like the idea of losing every game. Even if it's for the benefit of a team. But you want to win at least 25 games. And this is a game to win. Um, I don't know what's going to happen. But I'll talk to you after that game for now. Disappointed with the way we lost. I'm disappointed with the third period. I'm disappointed that we just can't score and then it's the same bloody issues that haunts us from so many pre seasons prior it's just the same issues poor goaltending when it matters bad in front of the net weak in front of the net personal errors and most importantly just a lack of ability to score goals when it matters but hopefully it's get better again in la because that is it for this one thank you very very much for watching and i'll see you guys next time